Welcome to another edition of Trucker Tools Talks. Every week we're interviewing people from across the trucking industry for business tips and updates on what's happening in the market. Today we're joined by owner of Pro Hall Logistics and the host of T-Pro Hall TV, Mr. Jerron Ham. Thanks for speaking with us today, Jerron. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Of course. How's, how are things going for you today? Oh, it's pretty good, man. It's about 1.30 my time. Uh, the dispatching work is done for the day, so now I just wait for the tire blowout calls and <laughs> <laughs> things like that. So it's pretty smooth. So uh, to, to kick things off, uh, can you tell us about how you got your start in trucking and what you do currently? Yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, I was in the NFL for five years and uh, my third end of my third year, kind of in between, I broke my leg. So my fourth year was spent recovering uh, from a broken leg. And in that time, I was like, all right, football can't end. Yeah. And so uh, I tried personal training. It wasn't working for me. And someone showed me hot shot trucking, actually. So a lot of people are in the hot shot. Somebody showed me that. And I was like, okay, worst case scenario, I could drive a dually and uh, generate some income. So that was my intro to trucking, uh, straight from the football field to finding loads. That's an odd transition, man. I haven't heard yeah. that one before. Right. So, so what position did you play? In college, I was a receiver. And day one in the NFL, they turned me to a tight end. Tight end, what team? That was with the Saints. So that's where I originally signed to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we talked a little bit about what initially attracted you to the trucking industry. So you just saw, you saw people doing hot shots. Did you know somebody that was doing hot shot? Well, so my girl's dad was here. I knew he was in the trucking business. And uh, we had, she had picked him up from a truck stop maybe four days before I knew what he was driving. So while he was here, he was telling me about the money and I was like, yeah, that sounds that sounds good, but yeah, I, I don't know how to drive a semi truck. I never mentioned that I didn't know how to drive a semi or even got into what type of truck. I just assumed it was semi. And so we go to drop him off at the Loves uh, down here on 67. And uh, I see a dually. He's like, yeah, that's my truck right there. And I was like, oh, you're making that money with, with that setup? He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, it's called Hot Shot. And I said, like, okay. So then, uh, before that, though, no previous like experience in trucking. Nobody I knew uh, was in the trucking industry. So, um, you know, I, I know that you, you do some mentoring for new drivers. How did you get involved with uh, mentoring new drivers? Well, so being somebody who came straight from uh, no experience from football to a hot shot, I started documenting it on Pro Hall TV on YouTube. I just made a little channel. I didn't expect it to grow too big. I was I was excited with like 50 subscribers. And as I grew and continued to document my journey, uh, I started to get a lot of questions from people who were doing the same thing as me. They are jumping from one career into trucking via hot shot. And so uh, so much time was spent for free that I was like, okay, let me let me package something together and and offer it as a service. So that's kind of how I got into consultations and things like that and really having a detailed package on what I could help people uh, achieve as far as getting their process started and going. That's awesome. So with that in mind, what are some of the things you see new drivers struggling with when they're getting started? Uh, a lot of it is is just exactly what to do, the step by step. And even myself included, when I got going, it was a hope that I had everything right when I first put it on the road. And so those beginning steps and knowing that you get to check that, you know, check getting your business, check getting your MC and DLT and, yeah. and going in order. That's one thing that people struggle with. And also understanding the expenses that come along with trucking. Even myself, I heard the big number, jumped in and realized, okay. All the hidden costs come out, right? Yeah, a lot of it. 25% uh, going to fuel. You have a blowout or have to get a record for some reason, things like that. So. Uh, I think getting started every process, uh, every step in that process and tracking expenses early on is uh, two major things that people uh, struggle with when getting going in the trucking industry. So going back to, I, I, you know, call it past life, but mm -hmm. what are some of the similarities between trucking and football for you? Uh, pushing through every day. It's a every day. It's a new challenge. Uh, the work. The work ethic you have to put into it for it to be profitable and be worth your time but number one is just the perseverance you have to have 
to get through because there's so many ups and downs in trucking it could get mentally draining if you aren't prepared for it or or expecting something easy and so that's the biggest thing just being able to persevere through adversity uh, on the football field and in the trucking world yeah logistics is a different level of stress i would say for sure yes yes i i wouldn't have imagined this like uh from the conversation i had with my girl's dad to now and everything i've been through in between that was nowhere on my radar when we first discussed everything yeah a lot a lot of assumptions i think are made uh, about mm -hmm. the industry when you see it's just a, somebody driving a truck down the road they don't understand all the uh the a to z's in between you getting to point right. point a to point b like they don't they don't get it so definitely yeah, yeah for sure um so you know we talked a little bit about you know the position you played a tight end you played for the saints but who, who's your favorite college team and then following up from that who's your favorite pro team uh, college team, I'm from Louisiana, so I really like to follow LSU. Uh, they're having a down year right now, so hopefully they shake back. And then I'm always intrigued with Bama, just seeing, not necessarily a, a fan, but I'm, it's more Nick Saban. What about him creates that type of winning, you know, winning culture. Progress, uh, right? Right, but but favorite team will be LSU. How about pro team? Are you, are you? Uh, I keep up with the 49ers. I like the 49ers. Yeah, that that was the team where I really started to play a lot when I was in the NFL. So uh, I love them. Uh, the Washington football team now when I was there was the Redskins. Yeah. But so those two teams that I played the most for are my two favorite teams in the league. Say Niners, like I, I, I've always been a Seahawks fan ever since yeah. I like football. Like I knew that I could like football. I've been a mm -hmm. Seahawks fan. So uh, okay. I was yeah. with them too. I was with them for a training camp. Oh yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, you know, we talked a little bit about, about you that you do the hot shot, right? So what types of freight does pro hall logistics specialize in and, um, what is it that made you choose that specialty? yeah okay um so we we do semis now so we moved from hot shot to semi but in hot shot majority of people are either doing car hauling or they're doing flatbed you know for depending on the length of the trailer but it's some type of flatbed right so when i got my semis i already knew the flatbed industry from hot shot and some of the shippers and receivers and things like that from hot shotting so we just naturally gravitated towards flatbed and we run uh Mostly flatbed, I have one truck, he's an older driver, so he does power only, uh, hauling some windows. But uh, we like we like flatbed because the drivers like it. It's, it's always something new, always some type of different load that they have to you know, work with and strap or chain down. I like it because I know it. I know how that industry works. The scheduling is different than drive-in or reefer. And uh, we don't really run into many waiting times that's i got a message today somebody driving has to wait six days to get unloaded and so we don't run into that in flatbed it's fork on fork off and keep it moving keep the wheels rolling right yeah for sure for sure i, I have i have brokerage experience uh a fairly decent brokerage experience experience myself and i i did a lot of flatbed work that's kind of what i specialize in as well as okay flatbed freight so i'm very familiar mm. with yeah. that a lot of military freight humvees so do, yeah do you do regional work are you are you regional are you regional about where your location is or do you do full 48 what does that look like for you we have the authority to go off 48 um we were running some cali like north carolina's the cali but the fuel just got so high mm -hmm. and so right now we're really running the southeast and midwest and we've been doing pretty good. It's a couple more loads a week to get those same numbers that we were getting on those long hauls. A few more but, Yeah, but we're getting better better rate per mile in some of those areas as well. So cheaper fuel, better rate per mile. The you know numbers yeah. looking a little better profit wise. Yeah. Um. So you know we talked a little bit about about mentoring new drivers. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could give one piece of advice to someone looking to become a new owner operator or to grow a fleet, what would it be? Uh, I would say get on top of your system and how your how your business is structured. A lot of people go in blindly with no way of actually tracking their numbers, even keeping up with their paperwork for audits and tracking their loads and then build relationships with with direct shippers. Um, 
I know brokers are very helpful for people get just getting in, but after a while, start to get your feet wet in visiting some of these offices and talking to people directly. And you may or may not come across, you know, a good a good customer who you could work with. But uh, you want to cut out as many people. By the time it gets to the carrier already, it's already cut down a lot. So you want to cut out as many people as possible and go direct. But um, I'd say number one, structure your company, track your numbers early understand what's coming in and what's going out. And that's the only way you can scale and you know build your business credit and things like that, have everything situated with your finances, taxes, so that you can go take it to a bank and get you know whatever funding you need. Uh, so that's the biggest part, that these financial literacy. Whether they're used or brand new, man. Oh yeah, right now used trucks look, the prices look new. I'm like, God, Lee, these trucks are 40,000 a year ago and they're going for 99,000 now. Um, you know, talking about that, I mean, truck prices, I'm sure are one thing, but what do you think will be the biggest challenge for small to mid-sized fleets in 2022 looking into the next year? I, I feel like the biggest challenge is drivers, just being able to compete with some of these companies who can give these big bonuses or give certain incentives. Um, I think not a lot of people being able to get in the trucking industry by learning from a mentor or, or uh, without having to have the experience can also be a challenge because now you have drivers who know what you don't know out there. And so it's kind of, you talk two different languages in that sense, but I think drivers could be an issue. Um, and the hotshot world, I think so many people getting in could end up being an issue just based off of supply and demand. If you got a bunch of trucks available and not so many loads, then rates will probably drop. Um, Semi-wise, I think semis will do good as long as we can get this this container thing situated and get those get that freight moving. Uh, semi should should continue to roll the same way if they have drivers. So you do a lot of port work as well? Not a ton, no, not too much. Uh, only if it's paying good and that driver has a twit card to get on and off. Yeah, uh, we we run into some issues with timing there. Uh, long oh, waits nice. recently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a. Uh, I pay. I'm paying for everybody who doesn't have Twig to get their Twig though, just in case. You know, when everything does start moving, you got a bunch of containers that's going to need to get moved around. And so, uh, just want to put our put ourselves in a good position for that. The future, it's good good idea. Yeah, exactly. Um. So how you said that was how long ago then? How long have you been in the in the business? Uh, since 2018, authority went active October 2018. 2018. When I talk to a lot of carriers, because like I said, I've been in the broker agency for a while. I've got about 15 years in the broker chair. Um, mm -hmm. Most of that time was spent in the flatbed world, right? Like I moved a lot of flatbed freight. Um, mm -hmm. And we had rules at our brokerage that carriers had to have at least six months of authority um you know some kind of reference of some sort that we could cross check to make sure that we were hiring somebody reputable you know right. i'm sure you do the same thing on the brokerage side right like you want to make sure the broker is going to pay you on time i'm sure you've got truck driver oh, yeah. friends that you call to say hey how does have you worked with this company how well do they pay that kind of thing i'm sure You're right you know but i i'm really i haven't really talked to somebody that's in the hot shot industry about that that time to ramp up right is are you mm. facing the same thing in the hot shot industry where you have to have authority for so long um you know what's the struggle with freight when you're starting out in the hot shot world yeah yeah they still have that it's slow like 90 days where everybody's trying to make and so my suggestion to those uh guys just starting off with those companies just starting off with new mc numbers is find the brokers who do work with those new companies because a lot of them do now you can't you can't negotiate as much because they know right. you don't have many options and so going in in that first three months just expect to maybe even lose a little money but hopefully break even uh with with your numbers because you don't have as many options you cut off it's very few i mean like 15 brokers i, I believe i have a list of who don't require any type of history okay okay so with that like thinking about that is there like a certain level of nest egg or cash that you would suggest going into you know with that mm -hmm. in mind what if, if it's going to be three months till you maybe start 
seeing real profitability because you're having to negotiate lower rates to actually get the freight in the first place. Is there a certain amount of cushion that you should have in the bank account when starting out as a suggestion? Like, hey, if you want to become a driver and you want to do it on your own, not go, you know, be hired on with a company that's already working, right. but want to do your own thing. Is there is there a certain cushion that you suggest now that you've gone through this experience? Would you suggest having a certain amount of money in the bank when you're starting out? Yeah. Yeah, there wouldn't be a, a dollar amount, but more so what are your expenses at home that you have to cover what is what are your fixed costs in the business so your eld uh if you have fuel car costs you know um insurance for sure that's the one if you don't pay it well now your mc's number is going to get turned you know canceled because yeah. they don't cancel everything that under your that. business and so uh definitely you want to assess what expenses at home you have to cover and if you have a partner who's helping you then that makes it a little lighter on that side but uh, all of your fixed costs when it comes to the trucking industry. So that goes back to making sure you know all your numbers and what's going to what. So, you know, making sure you know all your numbers because some, like like yourself, you had a conversation with with your 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 girl girlfriend or or, or significant other's mm -hmm. father, right? Yeah. So. Um, so you were able to get some some input, you know, and then there's the, also the people that are starting out on their own that they've been in the industry for a while. They don't want to work for another company more. They do it on their own. Mm -hmm. But I, I've got to imagine there's some people that are coming in like just fresh, you know, baby fresh, right. that no experience. Right. So, you know, how do you go about learning what those fixed costs are? Because now that you've got some some seasoning, you know, like, OK, tires going to cost this much. Mm -hmm. This is how often they go out or. You know, a tune-up's going to cost this much. Fuel's going to cost this much on average, depending on where I'm driving it. Right. Right. So yeah. So well, he, he, my my girl's dad didn't really he didn't have all that in order. Either. He's okay. not rolling anymore. He lasted about six months from when I met him. So his purpose probably was just to show me, and then I took off from there. He he didn't he didn't have his numbers in order. Some of these things. So a lot of people get in like that. Um, me, I research a lot, so that's how I came about it. But I, I would say like tires and things like that, some of those things you wanna have as a part of your startup costs, your spares, things like that. So that wouldn't necessarily be included in that nest egg of, of cash that you have once you actually get rolling. And then uh, you just, if you're rolling, that would probably mean you're generating some type of revenue. So as your tires start to blow out, that's probably because you're on the road. So hopefully, you know, you have that revenue covering some of those expenses, fuel, fuel costs and things like that. Uh, if you're not just driving around for fun. And so if you, if the wheels are moving, then you're generating something. Right. The wheels uh, are perfect, you're earning, right? Yeah. Hopefully a lot of people deadhead and deadheading two, 300 miles. And in that case, well, now you're, you're working in the negatives. So are you seeing that now though? Cause I would, I would imagine and I've been out of the industry for a few years now, right? Like I'm mm. still in the logistics space because I work for Trucker Tools, obviously. You yeah. know, service the industry. But I haven't been in the broker seat in over three years now. So are you still experiencing the same seasonality? Are you seeing, you know, how's the freight trend for you? Is is there a lot of freight out there? Like you kind of get to pick and choose what you want. Are you still finding dead spots in the U.S. where you, there's just not a lot of freight? You got to deadhead a few hundred miles or mm -hmm. 100 miles to go pick something up to get back home or wherever the next stop is. Are you still seeing that or is is it easier to make those connections? Well, so once, you in, once you're in the business for a little while, you'll start to figure out these dead spots and learn to avoid them. And so now we do a pretty good job of sending them places where we know they're going to have more freight. We stay away from those super rural areas. Um, we still deadhead sometimes. I try to keep our deadhead under 100 miles. And so this week, I think the most a guy deadheaded was 60 miles. And last week we had a guy, he went 120, but we got that into the rate. So right. if we deadhead, we try to negotiate and sell our truck. Like, hey, my guy's empty right now. He could be there in two hours, but we need a little bit more. All the art of negotiating, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, so he's a great guy, has six foot targets, everything looks good. He's ready to roll. We just need a little bit more for this fuel to get there. I'm like, okay. So 
you know, some people are naturally wheelers and dealers. Some people have mm. to learn it. Um, right. You no, know, I was that a skill that you came to the industry with? Were you somebody that easily negotiated, and was this no. part of your character, or is it something that you had to learn? No, I definitely believe people who are more blunt are better negotiators because they're just straight to the point. Honest. Me, I was yeah, I was like, uh, how much? Well, can you do this? No. All right. Uh, all right. I'll take it for that. <laughs> and so then I started to realize, wait, this fuel is going up. This is, there were more loads available. Sometimes negotiating doesn't help because they know it's 10 loads in whatever Wyoming and it's a hundred trucks. So they're going to keep it low. But uh, now I'm pretty straight up. It's just like, well, fuel costs too much for us to take it for that. We could take it for this. And it's either yes or no. And I said, okay, well, here's one of my lines. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep checking. If nothing better shows up, I'll give you a call back and see if yours is still available. Right. And a lot of times we hang up and I get a call back. Hey, how much did you say? Yeah. Well, all right, you're taking everything from me, but I mean, yeah, you like you're taking everything. <laughs> and I, I, I can't afford rice and beans for my kids tonight. Come on, like I got. I'm make going into my own pocket. Yeah, I got, I'm going into my own pocket. Yeah, for that's the, <laughs> the old broker lines on the other end of it, right? That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. So I negotiate higher than I really want. So if it's 3,500 I'm aiming for, I'll go at like 38. So right. Uh, meet me in the middle at 35. Right. Okay. It's the art of the negotiation, man. It's the art. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Jerron, I just want to say thanks for joining us today and sharing your knowledge. Um, Appreciate you. And thanks to our audience for tuning in for another edition of Trucker Tools Talks. If you have someone in mind that you'd like us to interview or have any questions, use the comment box to let us know. All right.